we're going to be showing you the results of the SMS 475 in Goldenrod. This bike here has the Chromeworks Puma 2 system on there, louvered baffle, SNS 55 millimeter intake manifold, 5.5 injectors, Arlen S converted air filter. Also today I want to discuss different things on reading a dynograph, the difference between SAE and STD. Maybe go on some things about air fuel ratios and different things to look at when you're reading graphs so you can have a clearer understanding on what's the best average on the results of the can you're looking for. The STD, that will definitely be reading higher. That is a correction factor that was kind of discontinued in 91. Reasons why they went to an SAE correction factor, which is supposed to be a little more accurate. STD, it's based off a 60 degrees Fahrenheit, um, barometric pressure of 29.92 and 0% humidity, where SAE is based off of a 77 degrees Fahrenheit, barometric pressure of 29.23 and 0% humidity. The SAE has been adopted as the standard for the automotive industry since 91, and it's just something you need to look at because STD will show about 4% higher numbers than SAE. So when you're comparing graphs from here and somewhere else, if they have that little STD in the upper right corner, you're going to understand that those numbers are going to be higher than numbers, let's say, from here that read SAE. That's something I think everyone needs to understand. We'll show you some pictures of that and a dyno graph with both correction factors so you can actually see the difference in power between the two correction factors. It doesn't mean the bike's making more power. It's just a different way of us showing you numbers and the numbers are gonna be higher with STD. Other than that, I'd like to show you some things on air fuel ratios and how I make my air fuel ratios really wide for calibrating. A lot of times people will make a very, very small line to show you, telling you that it's a perfect tune and it represents the whole tune and that is incorrect. It only represents 100% throttle for that cylinder being tested, period. It does not represent anything for the remainder of the tuning. And second to that is, with it being so small, you cannot correctly read if it's a perfect line. Those are things to look at when you're talking to other tuners and other people in the industry and also researching things so you have an understanding of what you're really being told. Okay, so here we have both dyno graphs posted for you guys to see, both in SAE and STD. We're going to go over the differences in power right there, then we'll go back to discussing the graph for the 475. Um, the 475 is a great working cam. I've used it a ton. It's very well balanced, makes good power. Not very many side effects on it. Now, in SAE, this cam on my bike made 133.4 foot-pounds of torque and 124.97 horsepower. Now, if we click the STD, it made 135 foot-pounds of torque, 135.72 foot-pounds of torque, and 127.8 horsepower. That's a difference in power there, and you can see this on these sheets. This way, it's a good comparison for you guys to help understand this a little better when you're reviewing sheets from other places in the country. That's the only reason why I'm doing this. I will not be showing any more STD sheets throughout the rest of these videos. The cam made peak torque of just below 4,000 RPMs, and they held it there at 133 until about uh, 40, probably about 40, 4,400 RPMs where the torque started to come down and the horsepower started coming up. It made very good power up to 6,200 RPMs. Like I said, it's an awesome cam. I use it a lot and I still will recommend it. Now, if we look at the cams, then on the STD sheet, obviously the peak torque came at the same RPM that it just shows you a higher number. Now the cam started off at 2000 RPMs where I start my runs at, just about 120 foot pounds of torque, had a small sag in 25, at 3000 was back at 120. It ramped up to 130, 133.4 foot pounds of torque. Uh, 3,800 RPMs and just carried right out there. Different exhaust systems will show different results for how the cams come in and out, but this is a good example of how this cam normally works, where it's just a nice all-around cam. It gives you great power, great torque. It has a really cool choppy idle, and it's uh, that's why I recommend this to people. These results are after me making a couple consecutive runs, make sure I get the best power of the bike, and this is also after me calibrating the fuel mixture and working with the timing so I can really get the maximum out of this bike with this cam in it. I know a lot of you guys are asking why we're not running a 2 to one on the test bike. The main reason why is a 2 to 2 is a more popular system, and that's why I enjoy riding with my bike. One I'm using is a Chromeworks 2 to 2 system with a louvered baffle. You can see this graph here. I have a Chromeworks 2 to one overlay. 
and you can see the two to one is the blue line. The two to two is a red. And look at the torque line at 2000 RPM, so the two and the one has a dip there. Then it really starts ramping up really hard where the two to two was coming out of the hole already at you know, 118 foot pounds of torque. Yes, the two to one does kick a little harder between you know, 2,500 RPMs and 3,000 and up to like 35 where the two to two just catches it. And the two to one gets a little more on the top end. Now these are two different bikes. They are gonna be varying from bike to bike. They're never the same. It just giving you an idea of what the two and the one works versus how the two to two works and my reasons why I'm keeping the two to two system on this bike. You can see here that the two and the two system had a peak torque of 133.47, where the two to one had a one peak torque of 131.06, where the peak horsepower on the two to two was 124, where the two and the one went 128.2 and again they're two different bikes but they have very similar components other than the exhaust system but there always will be a variation from bike to bike they will never be exactly the same one thing to look at is to look at the air fuel ratio i don't show people the air fuel ratio line anymore for a couple of reasons the main reasons is when i calibrate a bike i have the screen very big like you can see here this particular graph this is a mess this is before i did any calibrating to this particular bike now if i take the same graph and I shrink this table way down and make these numbers much bigger, you'll see how good that looks. Oh, look at that, it looks perfect, your bike's done. That's not the case at all. The air fuel ratio only represents that run at 100% throttle, it has nothing to do with the remainder of the tune on the bike. This is that same bike widened up after some calibration, and I still have a couple little things to tweak here, but you can see how much better it is with everything set the way I look at it. That's one thing to look at too when someone comes out and shows you a graph like this and say, hey, your bike's running perfect and it's really shrunk down so you can barely read anything. And right now this, this graph is reading from eight to one there and 21 at top and it's squished down. So no matter how bad it is, it's gonna look perfect. When in reality, that might be what your air fuel, air fuel ratio looks like at 100% throttle. Something else to keep in mind. I always wanted to show you this to you guys and now you can kind of see my take on it. Here is an SNS 475KM I'd like to show you guys. This one here is fresh out of the box. You can see on the front here, this focuses it on. You can see the numbers where it states what it is. Over here, it says SNS 475. This is a cam made out of a billet chunk of steel, then hardened properly, and then ground to their specifications. Here is a stock cam. We can see the lobes are pressed on to a core with a hardened race pressed on the end of it. That's the difference there between them. Not a whole lot to show you here except for. Just this. We'll be showing you the other cams as we do them too, just so you can see that. SNS has been around since 1958, and throughout those years, they spent a lot of research development to try to build the best performance parts for your Harley Davidson. And they still work very, very hard with a lot of engineering to try and give us some really good products to make our bikes a lot more enjoyable.